Good morning. And we are continuing the season of Easter. That's why everything is still white up here. Our paraments, our uh, communion paraments, lectern and altar, and why the, uh, the lily cross is still up. We are in the season of Easter all the way up to May 19th, which is Pentecost. We'll turn everything to red at that time. But so we get to still enjoy the resurrection of Christ uh, as we'll hear in our message today. Uh, welcome to Central. Thanks for making the church part of your plans if you're watching online. Special thank you. If you have any questions about anything, check out our website, Facebook page, or call the office. Um, I have a couple of things to share with you, uh, three in fact. Number one is we have a new uh, associate minister. I was going to say senior minister, not yet. Um, <laughs> we have a new associate minister. Her name is Melinda McDonald, and we announced her uh, uh, her coming several weeks ago. She's actually here in Decatur, so we're thankful for that. She arrived safely. She'll be starting tomorrow officially, so next Sunday will be her first Sunday in worship. But two weeks from today at this 1030 service, that's April 21st, two weeks from today, uh, we will be installing her in her capacity as uh, associate minister as part of our service. And then at 12 p.m., right after worship, we'll be gathering downstairs in the Great Hall for a fellowship meal to welcome her. So, and we'll do some nice games and trivia stuff to, to try to get to know her better. So what we need you to do is to RSVP, let us know you're coming to that fellowship meal uh, so we can have enough space and food. And we really want to roll out the red carpet for her. So if you can really make an effort to be there in two weeks at 12 noon, that would be great. Uh, also, we're already thinking about the academic year 2024-25. Central Christian Church is really blessed by some of our ancestors in the past who set up scholarships for our um, students of today and tomorrow. So if you have a grandchild or a child or you yourself are looking at college or any kind of education after high school, you're eligible to apply for one of those scholarships. The scholarship forms are online. There's paper copies in the Welcome Center. The deadline is April 28th. No extensions given for good behavior. So you need to have those in by April 28th. And, oh, the last thing I guess I was going to say, we had two baptisms today at 10 o'clock. So two more uh, young people that confessed their faith two weeks ago were baptized today. We thank you, are thankful for that. And we're thankful for Ben Hawkinson, who is uh, filling in. We uh, lost both of our organists who were scheduled for today. Neither of them could be there. So Ben is leading our hymns, and we're super grateful for that. So uh, go ahead and <laughs> invite you to stand and greet the folks around you, and we'll start with our opening hymn.
please join me in the responsive reading. We are resurrection people. Christ is risen indeed. With the eyes of our hearts open, may we be ready to encounter the risen Christ. Yes, we are resurrection people, thankful to God. Lord, as we open this service, we approach your throne with awe, but in the company of your Son, Jesus Christ, who speaks for us as our High Priest. Receive our worship inspired by the Spirit for the sake of the firstborn from the dead, our living Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. be seated and we've come to a time for all God's children so if there are any kids that want to come up front with me and join me I'll invite you to do so now <laughs> how's it going you got up here fast <laughs> yeah right. hey guys how are you doing today good all right oh we got a couple more all right all right so welcome welcome so today we are going to be talking about prayer. So when are some times that we normally pray? When's one? Um. Keep Do we sometimes pray before we eat meals? That yeah, that, that was your answer? Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. All right, and then how about do we sometimes pray before we go to bed? Like when we're going to bed, we, we might say our prayers, or when we wake up, we might I say our prayers. You, you're not a not a bedtime prayer. I mean, sometimes I forget. It's okay. Right? But yeah, so there's all 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 sorts of times that we normally pray. But you know what? We can pray any time, because when we say a prayer, all we're doing is we're we're talking to God. Right? So we can say a prayer any time during the day. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I pray, I notice that I start saying things like, dear God, can you give me this or help me with this? Or you know, maybe it's, can I have a new bike or a new PlayStation? Yeah, yeah so I notice that I'm starting to ask God for a lot of things. And sometimes I forget to say thank you. And when I'm talking to God, like, I have a lot to say thank you for, right? You can see Pops. Nice. You can be thankful for Pops. All right? So I've got a paper here that's going to help us kind of remember to say thank you. All right? So all it says is it's an outline for our prayer. And all it says is, dear God, thank you for, and then it has three spots that you can fill in whatever you want, whatever you were thankful for, all right? So I figured right now as we close, we can practice. Can yep, those kids are, are praying, right? They have their hands folded and they're bowing their heads. So I'm thinking right now we can practice it and I'll say a prayer and you guys are gonna repeat after me, okay? So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. 
Dear God, thank you for our families, our friends, and our church. Amen. Before we have our prayer today, I'd like to invite a special guest to come forward and say a, a word or two. Uh, this is Rick Hamilton. He is our interim regional minister in the Christian Church in Illinois and Wisconsin, and as he'll say, in covenant partnership with Michigan. Uh, and uh, we welcome you. To, he's been spending the morning with us and like to bring greetings for us. Thank you, Michael. Hi, yes, I'm Rick Hamilton, and it is my honor to bring you greetings from your 123 sister congregations throughout Illinois and Wisconsin, as well as your 33 cousins in the state of Michigan. We are two regions in covenant partnership with one another, and that relationship is growing and thriving, and that is all very good news. You will hear more as the year unfolds, um, but for now, I wanted to pause and give thanks for you, for Central Christian Church, for its uh, message of love of Jesus that you get to both receive and share each week, as well as your generous support for the church in the world. We are so thankful for you, and I am thrilled to be with you today. Thank you. Let us pray. O God of grace and God of glory, we give you thanks for the gift of resurrection and for all the ways you bless us with new life, for healing after surgeries, for the blooming of flowers after a long winter, for reconciliation after a dispute or disagreement. Yet we also confess that we sometimes struggle to perceive your presence, even though you are standing right in front of us that we sometimes struggle to recognize your hope and good news, even though you so desperately want us to receive it. As the apostles, who huddled together in Jerusalem after that first Easter, were changed by the resurrection of Christ, even though not fully knowing what it all meant, we offer up our prayers and ask you to help us grow in our faith, even as there may be much uncertainty around us. O oh God, we pray for our world, that you would transform the governments and corporations that shape it, that they might be renewed in life-giving purpose and for the sake of the common good. We pray for our country, that we might see one another as fellow travelers on a shared road, and that we might find the courage to break bread together after a long journey. We pray for our church, that we might not take ourselves so seriously that we would discount the gifts of others but that we might find joy and inspiration in our working together. We pray for our regional minister and our regional staff, that you might guide them in all the ways they seek to serve you. 
We thank you for bringing Melinda McDonald to us and look forward to beginning our ministry together with her next week. And we pray for ourselves because we all have a natural tendency to want to see it, to believe it. But help us trust in you and believe in what you see, even if we can't see it yet. Oh God, keep us open to encounter your holy moments when they are revealed to us. Strengthen our fellowship with one another and with you that we might find all we need to continue our journey with Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, quick show of hands here for a moment. Raise your hand if you would like to have less stress in your life. Anybody? Less stress? How about raise your, keep your, or raise your hand or keep it raised if you'd like to sleep better? How about um, more energy? Optimism. Anybody want to be more optimistic when you wake up in the morning? 
What if I told you that you could have all that and more and you wouldn't have to take a pill for it, a shot for it, and it's even biblical? Any guesses? Generosity. It's true. Google benefits of being generous and those things will pop up on the list. We are generous in the church, though, for a reason that is far less self-serving. We believe what Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, that generosity is a fruit of the Spirit. And there is never a law, Paul says there's never a law against being generous. So that's why we give. You decide if you're sleeping better, if you're more optimistic, and all of, the, and all of that. We would love your testimonies. But now we, that's why we take a moment in all of our worship services to gather offerings and to bless them and ded- dedicate them. So if you have an offering you'd like to su- give to support the church's ministries, you can do that, excuse me, in the offering tray at the back of the sanctuary on your way out of the worship uh, sanctuary, or you can give online or bring your offering by the church, whatever's convenient to you. But let's stand at this time and sing the doxology and bless the offerings that we have received. Oh God, we thank you for your generosity to us, and as we present you a portion of your goodness that you've placed into our hands, we ask your hands to bless and consecrate these gifts that they might be used for holy purposes in the world today. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Let us pray. God, prepare our hearts and our minds for the word that you would speak to each of us this day. We pray this prayer with hope and joy. Amen. The sanctuary was packed. It was a Sunday, like all others, for Christians who worshipped in the former Soviet Union. It was an hour for them to come together to worship God, but under the watchful eye of the government in the form of multiple restrictions and unannounced interruptions and sometimes abuses. The parishioners did not know the parameters that had been given to that morning's preacher. He had been informed that he could indeed stand in the pulpit and preach a sermon. However, he was instructed that he could preach for no more than one minute. What would he say? What word could he preach to an eager and hungry congregation waiting for and hoping for some light in the darkness? He stepped into the pulpit and in a loud and joyous voice said, Christ is risen. And the immediate loud and joyous response from the entire gather community of faith was, Christ is risen indeed. That sanctuary was filled with people who believed in the resurrection of Christ, just like this sanctuary. We are people who believe that because Christ is risen, we can rise up. We are resurrection people, descendants of believers who have come before us, including the disciple Thomas, who is the subject of our scripture reading this morning. As we listen to his encounter with the risen Christ, let's imagine that we are in that locked room. Hear these words now from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Did you see, Thomas, the look on his face? I wonder what he had been pondering for those seven days since he was first told by the other disciples that he had missed it, but that Jesus had appeared to them alive, resurrected, and that he had not only appeared to them, but he gave them a gift of the Holy Spirit. I wonder how Thomas had felt missing it, being left out. I wonder how we might feel if we had missed it, been left out. 
And then Jesus appears again to the disciples inside that locked room, and Thomas is there, ready, I think, to see for himself, ready to believe. But did Thomas need anything more than the others who had already seen the marks in Jesus' hands and side? No, he was not asking for anything more than the others had already received. When the risen Christ calls Thomas by name, his immediate response is, my Lord and my God. Thomas was changed from skeptical, confused, questioning Thomas to believing Thomas in that very moment in his encounter with the risen Christ. Because Christ had risen, Thomas could also rise up from doubt to believing. How could that happen? I believe first and foremost that we must acknowledge that resurrection is a mystery and a gift. Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God's love that overcame death and darkness, both mystery and gift. We read in Matthew's account of the resurrection that the angels said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. He has been raised, not by his own power or will alone, but through the power of God's love. So what does that mean for us? How do we rise up from the wounds and burdens that would keep us down? I believe that it means that we don't do it on our own. We, like Christ, are raised. Since Christ was raised by the power of God's love, overcoming darkness and death, we, too, are raised by that same power of God's love. The things that we are raised up from may be different for each of us. We may be raised up as individuals or as communities of people joined by a common hardship. In the words of Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise, we hear the cries from the depths of her soul, of the experiences of her ancestors, a whole race of people who were stolen and enslaved. And we hear resurrection in the refrain over and over again. She says, but still, like dust I'll rise, just like hope spring high, still I'll rise, but like air I'll rise. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. And as individuals, we are brought down in need of being raised up from our personal hurts. We may experience the deep, deep grief of losing someone we love or a diagnosis, or an ongoing challenge of living with an illness, a broken relationship with a friend or a family member that hurts us to the core, or an addiction that has a fierce hold on us and just won't seem to let go. And maybe we're searching for answers to all of our questions. The list goes on and on. Every one of us at some times in our lives, maybe this very day, are down. We are under it. We're below needing God's love shown to us in the risen Christ. We all need to be given a hand so we can rise up. So where is that helping hand? Where is the power of God's love? We might be wondering, just like Thomas, I won't believe it until... For Thomas, until I see and touch the wounds in his hands and side, what is it for us? What would we say? I won't 
believe it until. We can follow Thomas's example. After he missed it and was left out, he got ready. He was prepared. He wanted it. He was looking for it. He was hopeful. And we can do the same. We can prepare ourselves. We can want it. We can be ready for it. And then when we receive that helping hand, we can claim it. What might that look like? If we are in deep grief, maybe we will receive a note from someone with no answers, just a willingness to be present and love us. Or in illness, perhaps we hold on to the hope of a positive test result. Or maybe instead, we hold on to the compassion of the doctors and nurses and caregivers who cannot heal us but can stand with us. And in the midst of a broken relationship, maybe it's our unanswered prayers that we hold on to and trust the power of God's love. And if our battle is with an addiction, the hand that reaches out to help us rise up may likely be the hand of someone who has walked that road and continues to hold on. All of these helping hands are here to help us rise up when we are vulnerable. Vulnerable like Thomas, vulnerable like Jesus in the tomb. I think the disciple Thomas, most often known as Doubting Thomas, I think he deserves our gratitude. His story is found near the end of chapter 20 of John's Gospel, and it is immediately followed by these words. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Thomas is there, I think, to show us the way, to know that even if we've missed it, we are not left out. The risen Christ knows our name and calls out to us to believe, to be transformed, and to live as resurrection people. When we are tuned in and paying attention, I believe that we will see there are resurrection stories all around us. I was privileged to hear one of those stories just a few days ago. It is a literal rising up story told to me by my 94-year-old uncle. He lives alone since the passing of his dear wife. He still drives and gets out of the house every day. When he's out, he uses a cane because one of his legs causes him trouble. He admits that he's not much of a cook and he loves it when somebody cooks him a meal. He told me that a few weeks ago, his TV didn't work for some reason, so he needed to get down to see what was wrong. Without thinking, he got down on the floor to check things out. Immediately after getting down, he realized that he had not given any thought to how he might be getting back up. So there he was, this once strong, able-bodied, never ever ask for help man, man found himself in a tough spot. No matter how hard he tried, his body with a leg that had never fully recovered from an infection was on the floor with no way to get himself back up. And he tried and he tried until he fi finally realized that in order for him to rise up, he would need to reach out for help. You can imagine that would not be an easy thing for him to do. He told me how frustrating it is when you realize you're not able to do something that you used to be able to do. But this story has a happy ending. With his cell phone in his pocket, he was able to call the neighbors. They came right away, and he was up again. Now, this might seem like one person's story, but actually, I believe it's our story. Each of us have found ourselves, or do possibly today, 
find ourselves or will in the future find ourselves in a tough spot, a vulnerable place when we need to be raised up. And thankfully, likewise, each of us will find ourselves in a place of being the one there to reach out our hand and help someone else rise up. What amazing and hopeful news. We are not alone. The risen Christ is here, among us, with us, and in us. Let's claim it like Thomas did, my Lord and my God. And let's claim it like those Christians who worshiped under the oppression of the former Soviet Union. Let's proclaim Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May it be so. Amen. And now as we prepare ourselves to move to the time of communion, we invite you as we do each week, if this would be the day that you would make your confession in Jesus Christ or you would join Central and become a member, we invite you when we sing our communion hymn to come forward and we will greet you here. If that is not your calling this day, we invite you to stand and sing and prepare for communion. Let us stand now. All right, before we have communion, I'm going to have everybody seated for just a minute. We have a, just a great, a great blessing, a great joy today. This is Noel Cohan, and she has come forward today to join the church, which we are so thankful. We're, we say that we're always thankful the way that God brings our lives together and give, give thanks that God has allowed our lives to intersect um, through our shared faith and through this place. 
Um, so Noelle's been coming for about four or five weeks. She loves traditional worship. She is an early riser, has been here to 8 o'clock, but um, is also loving 1030. Uh, went to Sunday school today, the Ecclesia class, loved that. Um, I asked if she wanted to say a word. She said, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, but she says that she's felt at home here from the jump, and we're really thankful uh, that she feels that way, and we look forward to all the ways that God has, has stuff in store for us to experience together in our ministry together. So as I share with you, as we all know, the only thing to become a member of our church is to state your faith in Jesus Christ, which we know you have, but we're going to ask you to do in front of these who are gathered. So, Noel, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Do you accept him as your Savior, and do you state your intention to join Central Christian Church today? If so, please say, I do. Then we welcome you at the right hand of fellowship. And we know that nobody can make it. We just, we just heard a sermon about a hand up, right? We all need a hand up. So uh, none of us can make it on our own through, uh, through life. So I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. All of you stand as you're able. You've heard Noel's commitment to you as a family of faith. Do you promise in return to walk with her, to strengthen her, to support her, to guide her, encourage her, challenge her, learn from her, and grow with her as God gives you the opportunity? If so, please say we will. Will. We will. And let's welcome Noel to Central Christian. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Um, you may be seated. I'll walk back with you this way, and you can greet Noel after worship on your way out. When we are infected with doubt about our Christian beliefs, should we be disappointed in ourselves? Not necessarily. When Thomas had doubts, Jesus was there to reassure him. Doubt, when it leads us to seek answers to our questions and leads to a renewed reliance on God, doubt can be compared to an immunization exposing our bodies to a small amount of virus so that we can learn to fend against it. So as we gather at this table to remember our Savior, Jesus Christ, let this Holy Communion strengthen our faith for the days ahead. And as we come to the communion table, please know you are welcome here. We practice open communion. This is Christ's table, and we stand here on his behalf. So now let us remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took a cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins and your salvation. When you drink of it, remember me. Let us pray. Risen Lord, as we gather at your table, we thank you for your presence in our lives. May the bread and cup remind us of the power of your Holy Spirit, which, through your glory, connects us with each other and with generations of saints in heaven. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The bread which we break is our communion in the body of Christ. And the cup of blessing for which we give thanks is our communion in the blood of Christ. Amen.
And now as you are able, I invite you to stand for a blessing and our closing hymn. Go from this place with the grace of Jesus Christ, the ever-present love of God, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Go to serve and love God. Amen.